Thank you for joining our service today here at Rima International Bible Church at the heart of Silver Spring, Maryland. I'm Pastor Frederick New Madison, and it's a delight to always welcome you into God's presence. I have a word to share with you. The title is Your Great Reward. God is a rewarder. Bible says he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And I'm going to take you into the scriptures to show you how God is a rewarder. It's an amazing word from God to you and I pray that you sit tight and receive this word. Let's go into the word of God. Isaiah chapter 61 verses 8 and 9. The Lord your rewarder. Come with me into the presence of God. It's good to see you and for our online worshipers, God bless you for joining us this Sunday. We give glory to God who has been with us this year. It's already um, end of the month and it is only the greatness and the faithfulness of our God. Today's message is titled, Your Great Reward, and your great reward as in the one belonging to you. Your great reward. We, we are dealing with God who is a rewarder. The text is from uh, Isaiah 61, 8 to 9, and this, this is part of our series on the favor of God. This whole month we've been looking mostly at uh, Isaiah 61, the favor of God, the favor of God. So I'll read these two verses. Isaiah 61, 8 to 9, it says that, For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people. Can you say Amen. And make an everlasting covenant with them. Nine. Their descendants, our descendants, will be known among the nations. And their offspring or our offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for our gathering in your name. Your word says that wherever two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in their midst. And so I thank you that you are here in our midst. As we open your scriptures and, and reflect about your truth, I pray that you will give us a rima word. I pray, O oh God, that the, 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 the prophecy of Isaiah would resonate with us. I pray for revelation as we look into the word about you being a rewarder. Open our eyes. I bless our worshipers who are joining us remotely. I pray that as we are receiving this Rima word here, they will also receive a Rima word in their homes or wherever they might be. May this word be real. May this word come alive, oh God, so that we will take away a great blessing from your presence. I commit myself finally. I ask you to anoint my lips. I pray and I commit my thoughts and my mind unto you. I pray, oh God, that you will use me as a vessel to communicate your truth to your people. I bless you, O oh God, and I ask you this. In the mighty name of your son Jesus and God's people said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Your great reward. Your great reward is the word God has for you. And this, as I said, comes out of the series on the year of the Lord's favor that we've been focusing on uh, since the beginning of the year. We learned in the past month that the Lord God in his Time of favor restores. It restores things that we have lost. We find that in Isaiah chapter 61, they will rebuild ancient ruins. That's restoration. We also learn that God in the year of his favor restitutes. He gives us payback for things that were lost. And I stress the difference between Restoration and restitution, God is making up for things lost so you are restituted. And in that case, strangers will shepherd your flocks. Why? Because God must help you catch up. We also learn that in the year of his favor, there is replacement. He gives you beauty for ashes. He gives you 
comfort instead of mourning. He, he takes A and he gives you B. And then, of course, we learn that in the time of his favor, he gives us a new name. Still Isaiah 61, they will be called oaks of righteousness. They didn't used to be called oaks of righteousness, but in the time of God's favor, God gives you a new brand. You are rebranded, and you go further, faster. And the final pillar in the year of the Lord's favor was he rewards his people. Can you say amen? amen. And today we're going to focus on the Lord who is a rewarder. The Lord who is a rewarder. The text we read from verses 8 and 9, Isaiah 61 says that, For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery in my faithfulness. I will reward. I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. I want you to think of your God as a rewarder. He's a rewarder. We know God as many things. He's a savior. He's a deliverer. He's a helper. He forgives sins, but we often lose sight of the fact that he's also a rewarder. That's something fresh. He's a rewarder. A reward is a thing given in recognition of one's actions, service, efforts, sacrifice, or achievements. When we take some actions, certain actions in life, we get rewarded for them or we offer some service in the community, we receive some award or some citation. We make an effort in a certain area, we get rewarded for that, we get recognized, we make a significant sacrifice, we get rewarded and, and, and we achieve something worthy of note, we get rewarded. This applies to God too. This certainly applies to God too. Now, oftentimes we do not see God as a rewarder. It's easy to see God as a healer, Jehovah Rapha, and sing songs about him, and easy to see him as our banner, Jehovah Nisi. It's easy to see God as a provider, Jehovah Jireh, and we are kind of comfortable with, with those accolades of God. And those are all true. But today, God sent me to come and tell you that he is also a rewarder and not just a rewarder. He is your rewarder. He's your rewarder. Now, the, the reason in the past we have not often associated God with being a rewarder is because in this natural realm, rewards are sometimes tainted. Sometimes rewards go to folks who do not deserve it. People have scholarships they didn't work for because their father knew somebody who was on the scholarship board and he got the reward without earning it. And, and, and somebody got the contract not because of merit, but because of connections. So in our human world, our understanding of rewards is a little bit tainted. So we don't naturally see God as a rewarder. We, we almost see it as if he corrupts the whole area of rewards. But God is a rewarder. And the Bible says that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith. It is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Today God wants you to begin to see him as a rewarder, somebody who rewards us for our actions, for our service, for our efforts, for our sacrifice, and for our achievements. Amen. Amen. The Lord, our rewarder, he actually has a name, Jehovah Gmola in Hebrew, G-M-O-L-A-H, Jehovah Gmola, the Lord, our rewarder. Jeremiah 51 and verse 56, the English Standard Version says that for the Lord God, or for the Lord is the God of recompense. He will surely repay, for the Lord is the God of recompense. 
a recompense. Jehovah Gemara, the, the Lord is a God of recompense. Recompense points to compensation. Compensation as in payment. And our Lord God, in addition to being all of that, is also a God of compensation. A God who pays. So I encourage you to walk with him with that in mind that the God I serve is a God who rewards us. And he does that at the appropriate time in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is a spirit of religion that fights against God being a rewarder. Oftentimes, when God rewards people with stuff, with good things for their service, for their efforts, for their sacrifice, we perceive it as worldly. People have problems when we have rewards in our hands. They say, if you are a born-again believer, if you know the Lord, how come your hands are full? Because God rewarded you. And that's a negative twist on God being a rewarder. So people go around with problems, with people's rewards, but the Lord is a God who rewards. And we must, of course, be comfortable with his rewards. Amen. As I said, it's just wrong teaching. It's a doctrine of demons. And if you think about it, if you did nothing to earn salvation, and you did something to earn a reward, which is more difficult to conceptualize, we did nothing, and God said, I will bless you with salvation anyway, and we can live with that. How can we? <laughs> it's grace. So if you do something, and God says, here is a reward, we should, be, we should find it easier to accept that. Except the spirit of religion has twisted that, but I brought teaching that God rewards you. There, there are rewards in your future for something you did for some investment you made, for some prayers you offered, for some sacrifices you made. And when those rewards come, receive it with thanksgiving because it came from Jehovah Gemola. It came from God of recompense. Hallelujah. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. In Psalm 65, verse 11, God paints a picture of who he is. He says that you crown the year with your bounty, that's the psalmist talking, and your carts overflow with abundance. For whose purpose? For the purpose of his children who seek him and worship him faithfully. God has a cart, like a grocery cart, and that cart is full of abundance. And he's walking in the aisle, and he's given to this family, and to this family, and to this family, and to that family. Why? Because it's time to reward some people. Scripture says, in the time of my favor, I will answer you. That's when his reward comes to your address. That's when his reward, you have been waiting on God for ages, for years and years and crying. And God heard it. And in the time of salvation, he pulled his cart and he said, here is your reward. And here is your reward. As I preach, I pray in the name of Jesus that anybody do a reward from God will receive it. Because your labor will not be indefinite. Even men reward men. Even teachers reward students. We reward people. How much more God, the good God. In the time of my favor, I will answer you. God is answering you with a reward. Can you say amen? God is the one who gives out the rewards, not men. So in everything you do, Look to God to be rewarded. When you look to men to be rewarded, you could sell your birthright. So ultimately, keep your eyes on God and don't sell your soul because God is your source and he alone is Jehovah our recompense. He alone is Jehovah Gemola. He alone is the one who has the reward in his hands. 
And that must draw us, that must encourage us to continue our journey with him. What does the reward looks like, look like from God? A reward from God looks like nothing you can give to yourself. If you can walk into the store and buy it, probably it's not a reward. You are rewarding yourself. But typically, a reward that comes from the hands of God is supersized, is ginormous. It's something bigger than you can ever imagine. Because God is a big God. God is a great God. Abraham trusted God. That was his effort. That was the action. He could not conceive naturally. Neither could his wife. He and his wife could not bear children. And they put their trust in God. Effort. To the point where it was credited to him as righteousness. And then the Lord God blessed them with the child. That was his reward. That reward was something that Abraham could have never given to himself. So if you're here and there is something outside your space, outside your reach, it's in the hands of God. And the Lord God who rewards will take that thing that is outside your reach and say, here you are, it's time for your reward. It's the year of your favor, the year of my favor. Hannah similarly wanted a son and she persevered in prayer. Some of you have been praying for things for ages. You've been, some of you come here on Wednesdays and pray for the work of God. There is a reward. There is a reward. God is a rewarder. Hannah prayed and prayed and persevered in prayer and she was rewarded with a son, Samuel. David was faithful in the backyard taking care of sheep. He had no place of prominence. He was the last in the family. But he was faithful to God. And he watched over the flock faithfully. He found favor with God. God says, you are a man after my own heart. And God put him on the throne. That was his reward. And that is directly tied to what he did. Joshua and Caleb were courageous. They were men of faith. Their reward, they're the only two who entered into the promised land. Rahab, a prostitute, did something, helped God's people, and God would take Rahab and put her in the line of Christ. She was rewarded. Ruth was rewarded for her loyalty to her mother-in-law. Esther was rewarded for rallying God's people to pray. Daniel was rewarded. And you go through the Bible and there are thousands of examples of people being rewarded. So why do you think that God will not reward you? His name is rewarder. His name is the God of recompense. And he comes with a cart full of rewards. And in the time of his salvation, he blesses you with the rewards. Our God is a rewarder. The irony is that everybody gets a reward. The, the, the reward, the, the concept of reward is God's idea from the very beginning. In the Garden of Eden, God created Adam and Eve and put them in the garden. And he said, don't eat of this fruit in the middle of the garden. If you eat of it, you will surely die, as in you will get a reward. So reward can also be positive or negative. Reward can be a blessing or a curse. And everybody gets a reward. The righteous get a reward. The evildoers get a reward. The wicked get a reward. Psalm 91 says, verse 7, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes, King James Version, shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. There's so many references to rewards in the Bible. The wicked get their reward, and so also the righteous. Psalm 58 verse 10. The righteous will be glad when they are avenged. When they dip their feet in the blood of the wicked. 
then people will say, surely the righteous still are rewarded. Sometimes we get discouraged in life's journey when we don't see the rewards that we heard about or were promised, but God is a faithful one and he will not forget your labor of love. So on whatever journey that you're on, remain faithful. Amen. Remain faithful because God is a rewarder and that will not change. Can you say amen? Amen. God is the only being qualified to reward because he's the only righteous judge in the whole universe. Humans have a scale that is not always just. So when we come to talking about rewards, our attention is on God because he's the only one who is eligible to judge. And I thank God that he is the reward. I thank God that men and women are not the rewarders. Otherwise, we would work so hard and never be compensated. But we have to do with God. It is God with whom we have to do. We look up unto God because he's our savior. He's our helper. He's our rewarder. And assure us he's God. He will never fail to give us our due. Amen. Sometimes the rewards seem to tarry. And we wonder when we are going to get rewarded or if we will get rewarded and How will that come about? That's for God to worry about. We must walk in faith knowing that he being a rewarder is tied to who he is by nature. God can't help but reward you where a reward is due. When it comes to waiting on God, it takes endurance, it takes patience, it takes perseverance like Abraham did. Abraham was faithful for a long time, 25 years plus. But because God had spoken, God came around to reward him with what he had been trusting God for. And today, for those of us waiting for one thing or another, keep waiting for God. Keep trusting God because as sure as he is, he will bring you that reward. Amen. Bible says he will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people And continue to help them. God is not unjust. Hebrews 6.10. He will not forget your work. And the love you have shown him. As you have helped his people. And continue to help them. We all have stories of putting in effort into so many causes. And receiving nothing for it. Except burnout. God is not unjust. God is not unjust. Some of you have have, have poured your souls to helping others, to helping communities, to helping people. You were lucky to get a thank you. They just walked away, took it, and and expected more. And were offended when you didn't give more. (laughs) More of yourself, more of your time, more of your resources. In fact, they went to bad mouth you for the good that you did. That's okay. That's humans. God will not forget your labor of love. Can you say amen? Amen. So for whatever you have done, whatever effort you have done, you have made whatever achievement, whatever investment, whatever sacrifice, Jehovah Gamola will not forget. And in the time of his favor, he will take out from his cart and bestow that reward to you. I pray that you are being encouraged. You need to think about some of the things you have done. God saw it. God recorded it. And he has not forgotten. And in the fullness of time, that reward is coming to you. Amen. Amen. God is not unjust. God is not unjust. He will certainly reward. So press on. There is a reward in your future. Galatians 6, 9 encourages us not to be weary. He says, let us not be weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. That's a conditional promise. Don't throw in the towel. 
You started a walk with God. You started a journey with God. You started something for God. Don't throw in the towel, especially when you do not see any immediate benefit. Continue. He says, if you do not give up, you will receive the reward. Oftentimes, we short circuit the reward process by giving up. That's why I tell people, never give up when God asks you to do anything. If you start to do something for God, never give up because there is a reward. Even in your personal life, business or education or family, just do not give up. If you give up, you give out. If you give up, you're out of the race. Never give up. The reward is at the end. You saw the video we watched. There is a reward. You might be hurting, but keep running. You might have to crawl. That's okay. As long as you are in the race, that reward is going to be given to you because we deal with God who is a rewarder and he will not fail us. He will not. I, I pray for believers in this season statistically, the, the rate of church attendance has dropped so woefully. People are tired. People find no reason to go to the house of God again. If you're home, I encourage you, wherever your church is, go to the house of worship. There is a reward for worshiping God. Bible says that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if you didn't know, COVID went a long time ago. <laughs> So please drag yourself into the house of God and help build the work of God because the gospel still needs to go out. We still need to preach the gospel. If we are able to do everything else, then we must continue preaching the gospel. We must continue building God's kingdom here on earth so that men might be saved. There is a reward for you, but it's contingent on you continuing in the race. There are two persons in the Bible who typify perseverance. They would not give up because they understood there was a reward that will not fail. The first one is the Apostle Paul. Paul was beaten and shipwrecked and bitten by snakes and stood before trial and flogged in public and assaulted. But Paul would simply continue. That's the Paul syndrome I call it. Paul had power to just continue because there is a prize, because there's a reward. And toward the end of his race, he said, I have fought the good fight. Have you fought the good fight for yourself, for the work of God, for your family, for your life, for your career, for your children? Have you fought the good fight? Because if you fought the good fight, Jehovah Gomorrah stands there with a reward for you. So don't stop fighting the good fight. Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. You must finish the race before you get the reward. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, the reward. It didn't fail. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, he said, I'm a God of justice will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but all, also to all who have longed for his appearing. Paul nails it. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I stayed the course. I'd remember that the concept of giving up is foreign here. We don't start a thing and give up. And, and I tell the children every day, you cannot give up. You cannot be tired. You cannot say, I'm not going to do it again. How will you get the reward? The reward is only guaranteed when you finish the race. And Jehovah Gomorrah stands on the other side with your reward. And if only you will persevere, if only you will press through to the very end, that reward will never fail. Here is it. Every man, every woman runs their own race. Everybody's race is different. And sometimes instead of focusing on our race, we look at Johnny's race and Susan's race and we compare. 
Johnny started their race before you did. That's why they have a reward. If you continue to, you will get a reward that you merit. And God will not discriminate against any other person. He will do for you what he did for Johnny. And he will be just, he will be fair, he will be upright, he will be righteous because the Bible says he hates wrongdoing. There's a reward for you. And Apostle Paul lets us know that running to the end provides us or guarantees us a reward. Of course, our own Savior, Jesus Christ, is a perfect example of one who ran to obtain the prize. Hebrews 12, he says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off every weight that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. What is your race and what is your race? That is what you must run. And as sure as God lives, if you run that race, there is certainly a reward for you. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. For the joy set before him, for the reward set before him, he endured the cross. When we have a revelation about God who rewards us, we are able to endure the cross. We are able to endure the pain. We are able to endure that sickness, that condition. We are able to endure because we know that if only we can endure long enough, we will receive the reward. People fall, people fail to endure, people stop short of enduring, people quit because they lose sight that God is a rewarder. They think God called them to mess around with them. No, God is a rewarder. So keep running that race. The Bible said that for the joy set before him, the reward set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. What would have happened if Jesus Christ had quit? There would be no reward. What would happen if you quit? There would be no reward. Your, your reward will freeze in time. And many people have walked away sadly from their rewards and, and then they go about and they see others holding their rewards and, and they wonder why they have a reward because they run their race. So as a church, we run our race. As families, we run our race. As individuals, we run our race. As pastors, I run my race. I run my race fully persuaded that there is a reward. We're dealing with God who is a rewarder. God is so many things and we've gotten very used to them. Jehovah Nisi and Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Jehovah, our banner, Jehovah healer, Rapha. And we have come to accept all of them. But God, this morning, as I bring this to a close, also wants you to know that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And in the time of his favor, he comes out with a cart full of rewards. Isaiah says, in the time of my favor, I will answer you. In the time of my favor, I will help you. In the time of my favor, I will make you. I will establish you. In the time of my favor, I will contend with those who contend against you. The time of God's favor is the time that God comes with his cart and dishes out rewards to those who are deserving of it. The time of God's favor, he shows up and he looks at our actions and he looks at our service and he looks at our efforts and he looks at our sacrifices and our achievements and he puts all of them on a scale, be they good or bad. And then he gives out rewards that are befitting our efforts. For those of you 
people of faith walking with God, be encouraged. There is a great reward. That's why I titled this, Your Great Reward. The year of God's favor is the year that God bestows great rewards to his people. For all the time that went by, the God of recompense comes about and he begins to pay and compensate for all the good we have done in our past, even the ones we have totally forgotten about. As I bring this to a close, I want to speak to those at home who might not know the Lord. If you don't know the Lord, there's something you must do. You're missing out on God's best reward for you, which is His Son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in Him will not perish but have eternal life. If you have not done that, you are disconnected, you are separated from God. And God has made provision for the greatest reward, His Son, Jesus Christ. If you have not yet received Him into your life, I pray that you open your mouth and say a simple prayer. Say, Father, today I receive your Son, Jesus Christ, into my life. I surrender to you and I ask you to take me forward from this day forward. If you did that, you just received the Lord. Find a Bible-believing church and worship with God's people in your community. If you're local in the Silver Spring area, join us on Sundays as we gather at 11.30 to worship God. And then write to us. We'll be happy to mail you a copy of the Bible at no cost. That's our gift to you to encourage you to study the Word of God. I'm Pastor Frederick Madison, And together with God's people, I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Together with God's people, I speak that the reward of God is coming to you. Church, receive this and remember that our God is a God of recompense. Jehovah Gamola, the Lord our recompense. Friend, there is a reward in your future because we serve a God who rewards us for serving Him diligently. That's what the scripture says. I pray that this word has been a blessing to you. I pray that you will listen over to it again and even share it with your company. God is a rewarder and He will definitely reward you for all your labor of love for His work. I'm Pastor Frederick Numadison, and together with God's people here at Rima International Bible Church in Silver Spring, thank you for joining us for this broadcast, and thank you too for continuing to support this ministry. It is through your giving that we are able to continue bringing this word to you in the community. God bless you until we meet again on Sunday to worship the living God.